uh, first, I'd like to thank the uh, uh, organizers for uh, uh, for the invitation and for organizing this uh, very nice uh, conference. And it's, it's good to see everybody after after this long. And actually, I will talk about something which I feel very excited uh, recently: uh, topology and the criticality under people coherence and with merriment. So first, let me. Uh, uh, you know, take a moment to acknowledge and thank my uh, collaborators. So uh, this actually is a uh, relatively new uh, subject to me. And actually uh, my collaborators have taught me a lot uh, while working on uh, this uh, uh, project. So, so yesterday there were already uh, uh, talks uh, which actually touched the, uh, uh, some, some aspects of the of their quantum detail theorems. So uh, yeah, so I will, I will just give people a very brief review, uh, introduction about the coherence and weak merriment. And actually also I want to uh, mention again, there are two different uh, symmetry conditions. Uh, uh, it was actually mentioned in the, in the, in the talks yesterday, but I will, I will actually emphasize them again because they will be very important for, uh, for my talk as well. And then I will talk about uh, uh, quantum critical points, especially I will focus on Two plus one dimensional quantum critical points, such as such as like the, uh, the well known Lewis and Fisher fixed points, and I will discuss uh, uh, their behavior uh, when they are exposed to the environment, when they are entangled with their uh, ancillary spins in the quantum channel, and we'll see uh, uh, what happens to the uh, well known Lewis and Fisher fixed points. And then I will talk about a uh, 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 symmetric project of a lot of states uh, under decoherence. And actually, this is related to, I and mean, this part is a part of which related to uh, the talks yesterday. Uh, we have seen a nice talk by, uh, by Tom and Alex. So I will introduce, uh, I will introduce some notions like a strange correlator to diagnose, uh, to diagnose like a, a SPD states under uh, decode theorems and weak measurement. And actually, uh, uh, so I will show that uh, uh, one kind of strange correlator, which is uh, related to the string operator uh, for the Hodan phase, actually fails. To actually to capture the essence of the uh, uh, SPD states on the decoherence. However, there's another generalized version of it which actually can capture uh, the topological feature of the uh, uh, symmetry protein topological state. Actually, now we, we had a better call the symmetry protein topological ensemble because it's a mixed state uh, density matrix now. Okay. So, um, yeah, just on some flashing review. So, actually, when a quantum system actually is, uh, is uh, exposed to the environment, uh, with uh, ancillary spins or go through a finite depth uh, uh, quantum channel, it's going to be entangled uh, with the ancillary spins, or another word, actually, we can, we can say that it's being measured by the, uh, by the ancillary spins. And actually, then uh, if, if we uh, uh, trace out the environment, trace out all the uh, ancillary spins in the system, in the environment, we are going to get a, a mixed state density matrix. So we start with a pure state density matrix. And actually, uh, this process will cause the system to lose some of the information to the environment. Eventually, we uh, get a, uh, a mixed state density matrix with finite, uh, with finite uh, uh, entropy. Okay, so actually, at this stage, I would like to mention two symmetry conditions. There's a one symmetry condition is that suppose the environment uh, or the ancillary space is actually measuring quantities that are symmetric under the symmetry G. So let's say the original state psi is a, a symmetric state. It's a symmetric state on symmetry G. Let's say that this uh, psi is a SPD state, which is symmetric on the or symmetry, or it's just a trivial disorder state, if it's symmetric on the order symmetry G. And also the environment is only mirroring quantities, which actually is invariant on the symmetry G. For example, actually, uh, we can say the environment is narrowing the energy density, which actually is uh, invariant, which is symmetric, symmetric on most of the symmetries. Then actually, uh, this uh, density matrix will be symmetric under two symmetry actions separately. One is the symmetry action from the left. The other is the symmetry action from the right. So neither action changes the form of the, neither action changes the form of the density matrix at all. So, so why I call this a double symmetry. So in previous talks, this was called a strong symmetry condition. You know, okay. But then actually, uh, uh, there's also a weaker symmetry condition. Here, actually, uh, I would call it a diagonal symmetry condition. The reason is that suppose the environment is mirroring quantities that are not symmetric under symmetry G. However, eventually, we actually consider all the measurement outcomes with a symmetric uh, probability. Okay, then actually, uh, then actually uh, uh, the system still has the symmetry G on an average sense. 
But this uh, density matrix is no longer going to be invariant under the left action of G and the right action of G uh, uh, separately, but it's still going to be invariant under the left and right action of symmetry G uh, simultaneously. That's why we call this as a uh, diagonal symmetry condition. This is weaker than the previous uh, double symmetry condition. So this can be uh, illustrated in this uh, extremely simple, the simplest quantum system ever, just one single qubit. So let's consider a state, which is zero position between uh, up and down. And actually this is a pure state density matrix. Okay, so this is matrix has zero entropy. I mean, has, uh, has zero entropy because actually it's in a pure state density matrix. So when it goes to a, a, a quantum channel, there's a weak measurement. Let's say there's a weak measurement on the Z basis, okay, on the Z basis. So it means that there's certain probability for the system to measure the spin along the Z direction. There's certain probability we get a spin up, certain probability, to, certain probability to get a spin down. But as long as we consider all the outcomes uh, with a symmetric probability, then actually this is a one of the uh, possible uh, uh, density matrix after the system goes through this, this, uh, this channel. So now you can see that this density matrix, okay, this is a mixed state density matrix, is not invariant under the left action of X or right action of X, but it's symmetric under simultaneous action from the left and the right. Okay, so this is an example where the pure density matrix has a doubled symmetry condition, but actually the, uh, uh, the mixed state density matrix has the uh, diagonal symmetry condition. Okay, this, this symmetry condition can be very, uh, uh, I mean, can be, can be illustrated in this uh, very simple example. Of course, Okay, for a single spin and for exact soluble models, we can do everything exactly. But actually, for most generic quantum body system, it's very difficult to write down the density matrix exactly or to write down the ground state wave function exactly. So we need something else. Okay, we need some uh, maybe field theory techniques to treat this uh, formally in a coarse grain way. So this is how we do it. So for example, we know the density matrix in principle can be written as exponential minus beta h and take beta very, very big. Okay, so this has to be a project, everything to the ground state. And actually we know that uh, uh, this density matrix, matrix element can be written in a uh, path integral way. Okay, it can be written in a path integral way. We just, uh, we just uh, do a path integral of the field S, sorry, field phi, and fix uh, tau equals zero at one configuration, and tau equals beta at another configuration. Then actually what we get from the path integral is going to be the matrix element sandwiched between these two field configurations. Okay, so now this, uh, uh, so after, after going through, after going through a quantum channel, then actually the, the mixed state density matrix will look like this. There is a, a Krauss operator operating from the left, some upper, uh, some Krauss operator dagger operating from the right. This is just like, this is just like this uh, uh, V and Z operator. Okay, sorry, this is a P, this, this is a P, it's a number and the low is density matrix. So the Z and Z is like this, uh, it's like this uh, K and the K dagger here, or K and K dagger here. So you can see that actually the K and the K dagger, they just behave like operators operating on tau equals to zero and a tau equals to beta. Okay, it's like operators operating on tau equals zero and tau equals beta. So it means that actually now this uh, mixed state density matrix, if I write it in a uh, path integral way, it will be like a path integral, but actually now we have some interaction term, a non-local interaction term in the, in the temporal direction. We have the interaction between tau equals zero and tau equals beta, and then we take the large beta limit, okay? So this is how we represent this mixed state density matrix in the, uh, uh, in the, uh, uh, in the, uh, 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 in the path integral way. So without having to derive the exact uh, uh, ground state wave function, which usually is a very, very difficult thing to do. Okay, so is it an interaction? Is it just boundary Actually, it's more like an interaction, but interaction sounds like a reduced to boundary condition, of course. But I think it's more general to call it a uh, interaction. Yeah, so I, I will give some example, and you will, you will see. Sometimes actually it's reduced to boundary condition, indeed. Uh, just to make sure, this interaction term doesn't have to be unitary or positive. It had better be, had better be. Uh, you, yeah, there's no, so there is some 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 uni, uni, unitarity concern here, but I I can, I can get to that later. Yeah, right. 
Right, but what I'm saying is that so so like like all the field theory analysis, what is the most important ingredient we need to know to write down field theory, including traction? It's the symmetry. Okay, we need to know the symmetry to write down the write down the Lagrangian, right? Write down field theory. So this is where the two symmetry conditions actually going to play an important role here to decide what is the form of this uh, interaction between tau equals zero and tau equals beta. Okay, so suppose we know this uh, bulk S very well. Okay, bulk S is just a Lagrangian or, or action for the bulk Hamiltonian, but then uh, this uh, interaction will be decided by whether the system, whether the quantum channel has a double symmetry or a single symmetry. So, you know, this will become a, uh, but, and, and you can also see that actually, you can also see that actually, uh, uh, of course, this uh, problem of uh, decoherence now is mapped to a problem of the boundary. It can map to a problem of the boundary of the, uh, of the path integral, okay? So the, the, the decoherence in the bulk is now mapped to the problem of the boundary. And suppose the system has certain uh, space-time rotation invariance or Lorentz invariance, actually many condensed matter system has certain symmetry, has certain Lorentz invariance in certain limit, Suppose this uh, has this kind of uh, symmetry, then actually we can do a space-time rotation. Okay, we can do space-time rotation. Then the decoherence problem in the bulk is mapped to the interaction between the two opposite uh, spatial boundary. Okay, two opposite spatial boundaries. So now we can ask the question, so what kind of system may have interesting decoherence features? Okay, now we know what system to look at. First of all, of course, there's an SP state. Okay, symmetry project of log state has non-trivial boundary. Okay, so it means that, I mean, as I said before, the uh, decoherence on an inner system can be mapped to the uh, interaction as the boundary and SPD state has a non-trivial boundary, then obviously it's interesting to look at decoherence on the SPD states, okay, because it can be mapped to the boundary problem of the SPD state. Another place to look at decoherence problem is for the uh, bulk criticality. Okay, suppose the bulk is at the uh, quantum critical point, then the decoherence is mapped to the boundary criticality. Okay, mapped to the boundary criticality. Actually, this was first pointed out by, by the Berkeley group. Okay, by the, by the Berkeley group, uh, uh, sorry, Berkeley group, and they started the one plus one dimensional CFD on the decoherence. But today in my talk, I will focus on uh, I will focus on two plus one dimensional CFD. The reason I focus on two plus one dimensional uh, from the Wilson Fisher fixed point is because actually this is a subject which actually has a surprisingly attracted a lot of attention recently. Okay, the boundary of a uh, 3D classical or two plus one D quantum critical point has attracted a lot of uh, attention recently. I will explain why uh, uh, why that's the case. Okay, so I will first uh, uh, I will first uh, try to try to uh, uh, study the decoherence effect on the Wilson Fisher fixed point. So before I move on, any question uh, so far? Are you using a Calvish path integral? Actually, actually, uh, we don't need to do that yet because actually uh, we are looking at the outcome of a decoherence. I mean, so the process of a decoherence is gonna be very complicated. I'm trying to avoid the hard problem. I'm just gonna assume that the system went through a finite depth quantum channel and look at the outcome, you know, instead of looking at the uh, uh, the process, which is complicated, you know. So. It doesn't look like because your initial state is the ground state of time. Yes, right, initial state. Yeah, so always start with a uh, uh, pure ground state. Yeah, I and mean, that's how we can do part in the first place. Yeah. Right, okay, so let me give a quick review, I mean, of introduction of the boundary criticality. Okay, so, uh, you know, so basically, uh, so we want to start in 2 plus 1 the critical state on the decoherence, and this problem is mapped to the boundary criticality of 2 plus 1 dimensional CFP. So let me just give a very quick review of the boundary criticality. So suppose I consider a uh, D-dimensional, capital D-dimensional classical phase transition. And now let's assume D is large, so we can just do mean field. Okay, we can do mean field. Suppose D is very large, and actually uh, there are two tuning parameters. The R phi square is the tuning parameter for phi square in the bulk. And this epsilon phi square is the is phi square as a boundary, as a D minus one dimensional boundary. So it's a two-dimensional phase transition. And actually, you know, no, so basically, suppose we want to fix the bulk as the critical point, then it means that we are looking at this line. Okay, we are looking at this line here when R equals zero. Okay, so now suppose the epsilon is positive. Suppose the epsilon is positive, it means that the boundary does not want to order. Okay, the boundary actually resists to order, even though the bulk is at the critical point. Suppose this is the case, this is called ordinary boundary condition. 
predator called ordinary boundary condition. And suppose epsilon is a negative, it means that the boundary wants to order before the bulk. Okay, wants to order before the bulk. And suppose B is large, actually, it's possible for the boundary to form the ordered state even though the bulk is disordered. Okay, even though the bulk is disordered. So this part is called extraordinary boundary. Okay, and this point here is called a special boundary, but this is not that relevant to our discussion here. So I will focus on the ordinary and extraordinary part of the phase diagram. But actually, uh, you know, okay, so for the ordinary boundary condition, everything is actually straightforward. Actually, uh, we know that uh, there is a bulk scan dimension. If I measure the uh, phi phi correlation, there is a bulk scan dimension. You know, at the mean field level, it's given by this number, okay. And actually, but actually, suppose I measure the phi phi correlation as the boundary, as the boundary. So if so long is greater than zero, it means that the boundary does not want to order. However, because the bulk is actually uh, critical, the boundary correlation will not be short range. It will still be powerful, but the decaying power is going to be much bigger than the bulk scaling dimension. Okay, so this is the uh, boundary scaling dimension as the ordinary boundary condition. So it means that actually, uh, you know, this is, I mean, this ordinary boundary, so this ordinary boundary condition makes the boundary uh, 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 a system which is the less correlated than above, but still powerful correlated. Okay. That's the question. Yeah. Uh, so basically, what does it mean to you and uh, epsilon? Is that just something that's emergent from the... Actually, actually, so for example, consider a IC model, right? You know, cubic lattice, but it's boundary. You can, you can make the... Icing coupling, I mean, you, you can make their uh, icing coupling as a boundary different from the icing coupling in the back, right? So, so for example, you can, you can turn the icing coupling really strong as the boundary, then epsilon will be negative. That means the boundary wants to order first. You can you can tune epsilon very small, that means that the boundary does not want to, uh, does not want to order. And, uh, yeah, it's literally tuning. Yeah, literally tuning the Hamiltonian boundary something as the boundary. Okay. okay. Yeah, but actually, you can immediately tell this uh, phase diagram is problematic when capital D equals to three. Okay, when capital D equals three. The reason is that when capital D is three, okay, then the boundary is two dimension. The boundary two, and, well, I'm, I'm talking about classical, classical system now. So we know very well there's a Morgan Wagner theorem that says that actually uh, for a purely two dimensional system with the ON symmetry, let's say there's an ON symmetry, for a purely two dimensional system with the ON symmetry, it cannot order. Okay, they cannot order at all, you know, okay, at a finite temperature. So this means actually, so at least this line should not exist. Okay, this line, I mean, there's no order phase as the 2D boundary before the bulk is actually, is actually ordered. Okay, at, at least this line is not, is not, I mean, I and mean, it should not be there. But still, the question is that, uh, can there still be a special boundary here or not? Okay, the reason is that actually for the ON system, even though, even though we know that the Mermin Wagner theorem says that a local model with open symmetry cannot order, but once the bulk is at a critical point, the critical modes from the bulk will induce long range interaction as the boundary naively. So it means that uh, this uh, two dimensional boundary cannot be viewed as a uh, local 2D system anymore. So it means that maybe we can get away with the Mermin Wagner theorem this way. Okay, but we get away in a very non trivial way. So this, uh, I mean, this. I mean, the boundary criticality is a problem which has been started since the 80s, as far as I can remember. But however, uh, this problem was only addressed very recently by uh, Max uh, Medisky from MIT. And uh, he pointed out that actually uh, this uh, extraordinary boundary still exists. However, it exists in a way it's called extraordinary log boundary. So what uh, this means is that uh, suppose I, I mean, when epsilon is negative, if I mirror the bulk correlation function between the uh, uh, O and the vector, I will get the ordinal Wilson Fisher correlation. But in this region, suppose I mirror the boundary correlation function, it looks like this, okay? So one over log x somehow. But I mean, so this means that uh, this uh, phi order parameter as the boundary is almost a long range order, okay? Because the log x is actually, is an extremely weak function of x. So it means that uh, this phi is almost in long range order as the boundary, but actually decays extremely slowly, okay, extremely slowly. So this is the uh, conclusion. And actually, I think uh, Max predicted using one uh, large N calculation, but then uh, there were there were a numerical check for, for this. And also the bootstrap work on this, actually they, they, they confirmed this actually, actually can happen uh, uh, in real ON system. 
the extraordinary part of this is that either there's a Q there. Oh, uh, the Q depend on N. For the ON model, Q depend on N. And, and Q is a function of N. Yeah. Yeah, right. So actually, yeah. So 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 now let's so let's come back to, to our problem. Let's come back to our problem. So our problem is a problem of our ON Wilson Fisher fixed point under the coherence. So as I said before, actually, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, you know, the digital coherence effect actually becomes some interaction term between uh, uh, tau equals zero and tau equals five. Sorry, tau, 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 tau equals two beta. And actually, uh, suppose I calculate physical quantity, which is the trace row and some operator, and this trace will try to glue tau equals zero and tau equals beta together. Okay, we'll glue them together. So it means that actually uh, this problem becomes a defect problem. Okay, it means that it's, it's like I'm, I'm inserting certain kind of a two-dimensional defect in this uh, 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 three-dimensional uh, Euclidean space-time. And this two-dimensional slab-like defect is located at a tau equals zero or beta because these two sides are glued together due to the trace. Okay, turns out that uh, it was shown that uh, uh, actually uh, this uh, extraordinary log uh, boundary condition may also, may also, I mean, can still exist for a defect. In a, in a in a three dimensional space. So this means that suppose I take a Wilson Fisher, a Owen Wilson Fisher a quantum critical point, and I go through some uh, uh, some finite depth quantum channel and it becomes a mixed state, and I take their ensemble out and try to measure the correlation function. I'm not going to see the Wilson Fisher correlation. What I'm going to see is something like this. Okay, you some some extraordinary log correlation function. Okay, extraordinary log correlation function. Um, yeah, yeah, right. Uh, the most natural size is indeed epsilon smaller than zero. The reason is that actually the interaction, because the mixed density matrix interaction will try to make the diagonal component of the of the uh, of the of the of the density matrix stronger than off diagonal. So it's a, it's going to be an attractive interaction most likely. And if it, if it's attractive interaction, you do renormalize. It's going to it's going to general, general, uh, generate a, a negative sign master as the, as, the, as a defect. And so this is the most natural uh, uh, choice. So is that attractiveness because of the specific channel you choose? Um, oh, sorry, I can't talk about it. Yeah, I, I choose a channel which actually preserves uh, uh, all the symmetry. Yeah, so I choose a channel which preserves all the symmetry. So 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 it means that the only the only uh, symmetry allowed term in the interaction will be like a mod phi square times mod phi square, and there's a negative sign. Uh, and then they do normalization is going to generate a minor of phi squared as the as the as the defect. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So this is like the it's like phase diagram. Of course, actually, uh, you know, suppose we're uh, yeah, right. This is a phase diagram. And you know, depend on depend on sign of this uh, of of epsilon, we can see either either the uh, uh, ordinary boundary condition uh, uh, correlation function and also you know, all the extraordinary law correlation function. On uh, this side, I think is a more is a more likely. Uh, situation. But let me remind you that so far everything happens in the bound. Actually, uh, uh, you know, the, the physics does not happen on the actual bundle. We take the uh, bound quantum critical point, uh, we, we, we go through the, 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 uh, the quantum channel, and actually uh, it is the mathematics which maps the bound <laughs> to some kind of a, a boundary problem. Okay. Yeah, okay, so actually uh, in quantum information, we can also look at the quality which actually is not linear with the density matrix. For example, this is the rainy entropy, okay, second rainy entropy. So we can actually look at the second rainy entropy and see uh, what happens. So the second rainy entropy means that we make a two cardinal system and we glue it in a uh, certain way. Okay, but now this means that you can see that now this interaction term becomes a non-local interaction in the Euclidean space time, but it's now it's a non local interaction between tau equals zero and tau equals a beta over two. Okay? Because I, I, I duplicate the system. Okay, I duplicate the system. Now this uh, uh, interference effect becomes a non local interaction in the, in the Euclidean space time. Okay, so this interaction actually, uh, you know, so this, uh, so, so, you know, so we realize that actually uh, uh, the second value entropy is, you know, so if you want to evaluate second value entropy, it's a map to. It evaluate the partition function of free energy of this theory with a non-local interaction between the two uh, two-dimensional slab defect of the of the system. Okay, turns out that there's a plethora of uh, possibilities. Okay, and once we evaluate something non-linear with uh, with a density matrix, 
is a plethora of possibilities. So, for example, if I assume the quantum channel preserves all the symmetry, then the density matrix will have a double symmetry, as I mentioned before. However, you know, depending on the, the strength of the decoherence, there could be scenario where there's a, a spontaneous symmetry breaking from the double symmetry to the uh, diagonal symmetry. Okay, there, there could be a phase transition like that. The phase transition spontaneously breaks the double symmetry to the uh, diagonal symmetry, which means that it leads to some singularity in these uh, second ready entropies. Suppose I make a plot of second and second ready entropy versus the strength of decoherence, I can see the singularity, which is. Uh, uh, actually, actually, so far I've always preserved the order symmetries. So far. Oh no! I I I, I said I cut I, I I couple some operator of phi with some operator of phi beta, but 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 the one I meant here is like it's a phi square times phi square. So the interaction is like, like, yeah, yeah, right, right, yeah. So far, you know, of course, you know, yeah. So, so in our paper, we explore all kinds of interaction, different conditions, but but I don't have time to explain all those. So, because so you're trying to put the combination model with chi squared times chi squared in the boundary. Yes, right. But it's not what no that the favorite of my uh, extraordinary results. Say again. The extraordinary result papers are about chi squared. I know that's why I'm saying that I turn on this term. This term can generate a phi squared term on the RG. It's irrelevant. If you preserve G times G, you can. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's why I said we need some post selection here. We need some post selection here. Post selection means that I, I put some emphasis. Yeah, we, I, I put some emphasis on certain phi squared. So there's a direct phi squared term rather than phi squared times phi squared. No, but no, I, I have like a phi zero square plus phi beta square, yeah. right? This is still, this still have two different G's, yeah. right? You know, but, but, but after post selection, you become something like this. Well, I'm just saying the papers you cited about the extraordinary result are not about this. I, I, I understand, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. right. So, so, sorry, I, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. So, so basically, here after the post selection, this term, yeah, so should have some directly should have some phi square plus phi square term, yeah. not not phi square times phi square term. Yeah, thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, so after the post selection, after post selection, yeah, we have to do some post selection. This is some of you know, yeah, which I go back to this. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, thank you uh, very much. Yeah, anyway, so 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 here I, I probably don't have time to explain the details, but uh, so so we're trying to say that uh, once we, I mean, you know, so when I was working on this, I was first uh, only thinking about quantities of linear with density matrix, but there's a limited offer phenomena that we can consider. But once we consider things are non-linear with density matrix, there's a plethora of, a, of, a, uh, of, of phenomena that we consider here. So for example, there's another more explicit lattice model. We can take uh, two, I mean, we can take a Tori Code wave function, a Z soluble Tori Code limit, Tori Code wave function, and we turn on decoherence. We turn on decoherence. And actually, sometimes actually it's uh, even more convenient to literally do a transpose to this side of phi. And now, actually, uh, this, uh, this matrix becomes a state, become a cap state in a double field of space. It okay, becomes a state in a double field of space. And then actually uh, this density matrix problem literally becomes a uh, problem of a couple two layers of the Tory code model. Okay, a couple two layer Tory code model. And then actually, in terms of and depending on the strengths of the depending on the strengths of the decoherence, it means depending on the strengths of the interaction between the two layers, there could be a condensation of the bound state between the onions from the two layers. Okay, for example, actually there could be an M1, M2 bound state condensed. And we know very well that under the primary duality, this conversation actually is due to spontaneous break with double symmetry to a diagonal symmetry. Okay, we know that the, uh, the, the bison actually is due to the icing spin in the dual language. So suppose I have like a bound bison condensation due to the uh, uh, you know icing cross icing symmetry down to a uh, uh, diagonal icing symmetry, this kind of base condition. Okay, so, so I, I actually use this model. Suppose I start with suppose I start with a uh, if that is soluble linear Tori code model. Turns out that uh, this phase transition is precisely mapped to the uh, 2D icing 
classical ICD inside a cluster. Okay, you are precisely 2D ICD inside a cluster. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I would also like to mention that there's also another uh, paper from the Berkeley group studied this space transition, and they also studied other topological order on the decoherence. And actually, uh, uh, the message I, I, I understand is that uh, they always correspond to some condensation of some bound state between the uh, uh, between, uh, uh, anions from different layers of the, of the system. So, you're saying that even if you put the the decoherence, you still have the stable phase up to a critical value? I think so, yeah. Right. Because, um, you, you know, the, the 2G particles are really in topological phase and uh, uh, it's not against temperature, right? Like any I know. That's a very good question. I was puzzled by this for a long time. But then uh, eventually I was convinced that the temperature is not the same as a finite depth on the channel. So finite depth on the channel is much weaker than temperature. So temperature is like it's a fully thermalized system, but actually finite depth on the channel is much weaker than that. Yeah, so if I put a toy bottom model with temperature, if one, when it's thermalized, it's going to be unstable completely. But however, if I turn on some error, some quantum error, it's a finite uh, uh, critical error rate or decoherent stress for this uh, quantum for, for the toy culture to lose its uh, quantum information. So this actually was the first studied by Prescott's paper a long time ago, and, but, but there he was considering calculating the uh, uh, but new entropy, and then this problem is mapped to uh, uh, the random bound IC model and the niche more line and everything. But here, if we consider the second Romanian entropy, is mapped to the IC model, the precisely the two guys. But then, would it, okay, so temperature would be different. But what about you know a zero temperature path? Like if I can I'll get a leg type path, but that, that would still be able to act and, and create uh, open strings, right? So, so there's something different in the model of the. Uh, open view of the kind of channel. I, th I think it depends on how long the process is. You know, here I keep I I, I keep stressing it's a it's a uh, finite depth, it's local. The deco here is open uh, only happens locally and for 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 a short amount of time or finite depth. You know, but so but but the example you mentioned, it's really uh, as I said, I'm I'm, I'm muting this, so I so I probably cannot answer everything you asked. But the, my feeling is that he here is that it's a uh, it's a local decoherence to act on the system for a short amount of time or finite yes. I think that's the key here. But of course, if it's a very long time uh, uh, in gradient evolution, then I, that, that's something which I cannot answer right now. Yeah, but that's a very, very interesting question. Though. Yeah, indeed. I'm sorry, can I ask a follow-up on that? Yeah. I was a little confused on why there was a beta parameter in your patent build description and what that maps to. In oh, I, that, I, I will take that to infinity. I see. Yeah, I, I think that's what you mean. I see. Yeah, I see. Right. Okay. It's just there to show the boundary, you know, but, but I will take that. I see. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. So so suppose I, uh, let's see. Yeah, suppose I turn on some, you know, so, so in Tori code, we have DRM. Right? In Tori code, we have sigma D and sigma X. Suppose I uh, allow the sigma X to entangle with the ancillary state. And this, and I trace out ancillary state. And as I said before, this effect can be mapped to like the uh, interaction between two boundaries, you know, between two, two copies of the system. And this system is nice in the sense that we can write down the exact wave function of the Tori code. I mean, we don't even need the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the path integral anymore. We cannot write down the exact uh, wave function. And then the second many entropy becomes the coupling between the two layers. Oh, it's it's some kind of for uh, z sigma x z something like that. I think. Yeah. Or there's a y there, and it's yeah. You, you take the sigma x operator and the uh, z sigma x z these are or sigma z x sigma z sigma z yes sigma x sigma z sigma z sigma z sigma z sigma z sigma z sigma Okay, so now let me get to the SPT state and we'll try to wrap up. Uh, right, so yeah, let me first mention the notion of strain correlator. This was something that uh, uh, we uh, uh, proposed or conjectured like a long time ago. Uh, so the, the idea is that suppose we are given a complicated many body wave function, it's not exact soluble limit, so it's complicated. You know, so, and we know it's a symmetric state, which means that uh, if I mirror all the ordinary correlation function within a short range, for example, so we know the symmetric, it's a symmetric disorder state. But now the question is that is it a symmetric uh, SPD state or is a uh, trivial disorder state? 
Okay, so how do we do that? So basically, uh, this is a simple tool we, we, we designed. So it's like an ordinary correlation, but it's a, it's a sandwich between the uh, psi, which is the state I want to diagnose, and omega, which is the uh, trivial disorder state. Suppose I know the symmetry of the system and also know the uh, 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 Hilbert space, I can always design a trivial uh, 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 state. Okay, so this quantity, an, an O, an O is say an uh, operator or order parameter which transforms non trivially under the symmetry. So the claim, the prediction is that uh, this quality should have either long range behavior or power law decay when R is launch. Then when, 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 you know, so this quantity should always have a long range or power law decay. So this means that the strange correlated figure should always be uh, non trivial. So how do we see this is, uh, I mean, how do, we, how do we intuitively see this picture? So it turns out that we can still use the space-time evolution picture. So, so this state, this omega, can be viewed as a uh, uh, evolution of a, of a system using the trivial state of Hamiltonian in the imaginary time. And the psi is a, uh, is a system evoluted using the uh, SPD Hamiltonian over time. And then uh, this quantity is narrowing correlation function as a temporal domain wall. Between the two hypertonians. And again, suppose there is a certain Lorentz invariance, we can just do rotation and this correlation function will become the boundary correlation function. And we know this uh, has to be uh, either power law or long range uh, in, in the for, for 2D or 1D system. Yeah. So, yeah, right. So this is, so this is the prediction. But actually, uh, then later, this will, I mean, of course, to test this uh, prediction, we need to take a really take a, a generic wave function and uh, to do the numerical simulation on it, you know. But actually, uh, this prediction can be shown explicitly for non-intacting for many topological instruments because for non-intacting system, we can really write down ground state wave function exactly. Then we can, we can compute this, we can show it's a power law correlation. And for a large class of orthotic and screen state, we can also write down the uh, uh, ground state wave function using the number. What happens in 3D? Uh, yeah, right, in 3D. <laughs> The three D, the only catch is that the boundary could be topological order, you know. So you know, yeah, right. So that, that's the only catch. So in three D, for interacting SPD system, the two D boundary can be uh, topological order. Then, uh, then the, even this quality can be short range, but we need something much more power loaded to detect uh, the case when the boundary is topological order. Yeah, but. This topological order does not happen for free fermion topological instrument, which means for free fermion topological instrument or weakly intact topological instrument, uh, actually we can still use this to diagnose the three D uh, case. But for in strongly intact bosonic SPD state, actually for three D, I will have the concern about the boundary being topological. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, because the one D boundary, because the one D system does not have topological. Oh, yeah, that's, that's why I say it's a long range order. That's oh, corresponding. Long range, long yeah, range. right. So long range order corresponds to the symmetry breaking case. Say again? Degeneracy? Why you fully? So if you have a topological phase on the boundary, you can put it in finite volume. Yeah, but then we need something non local. You know, we, we need some non, non, non local thing to, 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 to see the top of the water, right? This is a local correlation function. Right? Yeah, so, so certainly we can design something to, to see the case from the bottom of the top of the water. It just it, it involves something more complicated than, than this. Yeah, but yeah, right, yeah. Yeah, so this has been tested for different systems by different groups. Uh, yeah, right. So let me go back to a. Uh, Simple 1D SPD state, which was mentioned in Addis talk, and also I think in, in Tom's talk uh, as well. So this is a uh, Hamiltonian in, uh, in 1D. So uh, this Hamiltonian generically is not uh, uh, commuting projectors because suppose H is zero, then actually this Hamiltonian just contains a term which commute with each other. It's very easy to write down ground state wave function. So we want to be more generic, so we turn will find an H. So we take H equals to one half here. The system should still be in the uh, SPD state, protected by Z2 cross D2 symmetry. The green Z2 corresponds to the, uh, uh, the icing symmetry or the even sites. The red Z2 corresponds to the icing symmetry on the offset. So this SPD state is protected by, by, these two, uh, by these two symmetries. And then actually we can just uh, calculate this 
uh, this uh, strain correlator. I mean, we can generate the uh, ground stability function for this model using different methods, numerical or analytically. It's fine, but actually we can calculate this uh, uh, strain correlator. We can see that indeed, actually, uh, uh, right, I mean, we can just look at the red curve now. So indeed, actually, uh, this uh, strain correlator will saturate to a constant when the distance is large, okay, when the distance is large, when h equals to one half, so when h is one half, okay? So it turns out that this is a strange correlator, and this strain correlator in one dimension is actually related to the string operator of the Hogan phase. So this actually can be shown uh, uh, explicitly. So this, uh, so, so it means that this uh, uh, strange correlator being non-trivial actually means that the string operator in this phase is also non-trivial. Well, so it's again? What is that constant? It converts to constant by Oh, uh, it, it's set by this H, by, by this H. Yeah, I will show you another plot later. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I will show you another plot later. Which actually, so this constant was set by this H. Yeah. So P in that plot is... It's, it's a decoherence strength, but I haven't turned on decoherence yet. So I will, you know, so, so right now, let's just look at this red curve here. Okay, this is the red curve. Yeah, I, I, I haven't turned on decoherence yet. Okay, but now since that, so, so the previous the previous string corridor was, was designed for just a state, a pure state. But since we are going to talk about the mixed state density matrix, we had a better generalize the form of strange corridor into the density matrix. So it turns out we are two different generalizations for that. One is this. This actually is pretty much the same as the, as the previous uh, uh, strange correlator. This actually is a, is a trace of the overlap of the density matrix of the of the HPD state and density matrix of the trio state. And we sandwich some OO operator in between. So it means that here, because this is a, a density matrix and two boundaries, and two boundaries in the time direction, but this OO operator is inserted only at one boundary. Okay, only at one boundary. And then there's a time two strain correlator. We can insert the OO operator at both boundaries. Okay, at both boundaries. So we call this a type one strain correlator, which actually is related to the string operator. And this is a type two strain correlator, okay, which is something different, some, something, something different. Okay, so now we can look at what happens when we turn on decoherence. Okay, the decoherence here uh, is going to be decoherence on the even side uh, uh, Z2 symmetry. So it means that this decoherence will break some of the symmetry to a diagonal symmetry. So as I said before, when we consider this matrix, the Z2 plus Z2 will get doubled. There will be four Z2s, two green Z2s and two red Z2s. And the decoherence channel I'm considering breaks the two, uh, two green Z2s to the diagonal, but it keeps the two red Z2s. Okay? It's a mouthful, but actually, you know, it breaks the two green Z2s to the diagonal, but it keeps the two red Z2s uh, uh, intact. And then, as you can see, that uh, Okay, again, for h equals one half, then uh, the type one strain correlator will immediately become short range on the decoherence. Okay, um, so this is consistent with the Alex talk yesterday where the, 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 the stream operator actually will not be able to, you know, will not survive on the, on the decoherence. So it's the same thing here. So the strain, type one strain correlator will just go to zero. Okay, with a large distance. But you can see that type two strain correlator is almost unaffected by, by the decoherence at all. Okay, and this for small decoherence. It's actually overlap with the, you know, the dotted curve and, and the solid curve, they are, they are almost the same thing. Okay, well, type two strain correlator. So it means the type two strain correlator still captures, uh, still remembers that the, the, the system was once a uh, SPD state. Okay, it was once an SPD state, even on a decoherence. So now we can plot the saturated value, okay, of the, of the undecohered, undecohered uh, uh, state. Uh, versus h. We know that this system is a critical point at h equals to 1. When h is smaller than 1, the system is SPD state. When h is greater than 1, the system becomes the trivial state. Then actually, uh, this is the saturated value of the type 1 and type 2 strain for it. You can see that uh, they both will go to 0 when h is 1. So that means that these two actually are precise, are pretty precise, accurate uh, diagnosis to detect whether a, a state or example is a, a SPD. Uh, state or SPD in some way or not. Okay, so this is a some benchmark. So, for the actual numerics, do you just uh, find the ground state, set, take it to some value, find the ground state, take it to another value, find the ground state? Yeah. Right, yeah. 
So that's, that's literally what, what, what Jayam did. Okay, so now let's uh, look, look at some uh, two dimensional cases. Okay, for two dimensional cases, it's much harder to do numerics now. So let's, uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's much harder to do numerics. So actually, let's just try to literally write down the uh, uh, ground state wave function of our SPD state. So this is something uh, Senko and I did a long time ago. Again, so it turns out that uh, actually for a large class of a two dimensional SPD state, we can write down the schematic, schematic form of the ground state wave function. So it turns out that actually uh, for a two-dimensional SPD state with uh, U1 cross U1 symmetry, okay, so uh, the, the, you know, the ground state wave function is superposition of some configuration of for a vector n, and this vector n is a four-component vector. The first two components will rotate under the green U1, and the second two components, N3 and N4, will rotate under the red U1, or rotate under, under, under red U1. Okay, and then actually this is the wave function. This is the wave function for the uh, for the for the for the SPD state. It's a superposition, it's a superposition of the configuration of the n vector, but it's weighted. It's a weight, the weighted by a West terminal Witten term, by a two plus zero dimensional West terminal Witten term. Okay, so if you are familiar with the one plus one dimensional conformal field theory and not and not a sig model West terminal Witten term, you can immediately see. That this wave function looks exactly like the uh, uh, sig model for one plus one dimensional conformal field theory at c equals one. Okay, and this uh, one plus one dimensional uh, Latino liquid CFT has a, a nice a both foundation formalism. Okay, it's, so both uh, Lagrange and Jen will describe this uh, CFT, describe this CFT, and actually uh, theta is charged under red U one, and phi is the dual boson is charged under the, the green U one. So now the evaluation of the strange correlator becomes the evaluation of correlation function of these two coupled CFTs. Okay, so we make two copies of the CFT I mentioned before, one of the CFT I mentioned before. I turn one coupling between them and I evaluate the correlation function. Okay, then this correlation function will reduce to the strange correlator I mentioned before. So what kind of a uh, Correlation function are they? So first of all, we have to decide what kind of uh, decoherence we want. So we first want to turn on decoherence again, reduce the double green U1 to a diagonal green U1, but we keep the double the red U1. Okay, we keep the double the red U1, but we, we, we break the double green U1 to one U1. So it means that in the double system, uh, imagine we have theta and the theta prime and the phi and the phi prime here. So we turn on some term like this cosine of phi minus phi prime. So this term will break the double green U1 down to one diagonal U1. And then you can see that uh, this term will gap out the theta minus channel and the phi minus channel in a post-manation language. Have theta and the theta, uh, theta and the theta prime minus phi and, and phi prime. Suppose this term is term one is going to gap out the theta minus equal theta minus theta prime, the phi minus equal to phi minus phi prime, but still the theta plus and the phi plus channel will still remain gapless. Okay? So it turns out that this gapless, remaining gapless mode will make the type two strain correlator still non trivial. The type two strain correlator will still have power of correlation, even on the coherence. However, just like before, the type one strain correlator actually will be trivial. We have short grain correlation okay? because, because of this couple. So again, uh, type two strain correlator is a, uh, is a, is a is maybe a better tool to uh, diagnose the uh, uh, symmetry protected uh, uh, ensemble. So this is the uh, uh, this is the uh, 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 summary here. So actually, uh, uh, you know, so, so I'm trying to say the weak mirrorment or decoherence can drastically change the uh, the system because we can map to a boundary problem and many bulk evaluations becomes the boundary evaluation. It can become the boundary evaluations. Okay, and we also discussed uh, several. Uh, uh, diagnosis for uh, uh, for mixed state ensemble and the define and we can use them to define symmetry protein topological ensembles and there are several uh, related papers so for example the first paper was what Alex mentioned yesterday and there are papers from from uh, from uh, Berkeley group and also uh, Tron's uh, talk yesterday and also uh, there's another paper which started like, like a, a strain correlator for the uh, uh, the people here the SPD system. Okay, maybe a bit outlook, just uh, one more minute. So basically, uh, so we have mentioned there are two boundary effects which can be caused by weak measurement. One is the uh, critical boundary, 
reality is a topological boundary, but actually we can easily imagine a system where the two different boundary effects actually interplay at the same time. Okay, so we can just uh, maybe drive, you know, drive a uh, SPD state to a uh, uh, to some critical point, and then actually we can consider. I mean, then uh, the weak measurement or the coherence will have two different boundary effects together, and this actually is something which actually has attracted a lot of attention in the last uh, decade. Uh, numerically, for example, people have really literally studied the SPD state, drive to a critical point and study what happened as the boundary. But here I'm saying that the decoherence is another way to realize this, uh, this physics. And actually, we can also discuss uh, uh, deconfined phases or deconfined critical point under uh, decoherence. So this was discussed a little bit in our paper, but there's a lot more to do. And actually, the one sentence summary for this is that actually decoherence seems to drive confinement, seems to make the system lose deconfinement. Yeah, but I think there's a lot more to uh, to uh, to understand here. So thank you for your. your so, uh, we're running behind uh, the beginning of the coffee break. Uh, so I'll take maybe one question. If there's one question, that's question. Yeah. So just okay. the first thing you discussed, we measurement and quantum criticality. Can you just say, um, maybe you said during the talk, what would be kind of a thought experiment which would show? Um, that you're talking about to so do some measurement on a on a quantum system that's interacting with the environment and what we see. I, I, yeah, I should see. I think I will see the boundary criticality. So you're saying exponents would be modified. Yeah, will be modified. Yeah, boundary exponents. Yes. Yes. Right. Components. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's let's see here again.